And again, after a long conversation, Moses tried to excuse himself from the mission by saying, Pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue. Exodus 4.10 Moses still had the problem of focusing on himself and his inability to speak. God was telling him that it is not about him. God is the one who will go. God reminded him again that he is not the one who will act. It is God who will do everything by him. The Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouths? Or who makes them mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have not I, the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. Moses was focusing on himself, and God was focusing on himself because he is the healer. This is prayer, to forget about yourself and dissolve inside God. Who created the mouth? Who created Pharaoh? Wasn't me? I am with you. The same thing happened to, with Jeremiah. God appeared to Jeremiah and told him to speak to his people, and Jeremiah tried to excuse himself because he is young and weak. Jeremiah was surprised and said that he wasn't fit for this calling. And God also told him that it was not about whether he can work or not, but that it was about God who will be with him. But God doesn't choose people because they are already strong. He works with them with his power so they become strong. God said to him, Do not say, I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you. Jeremiah 1, 7 and 8. God doesn't ask us to be afraid, to not be afraid, because we are strong or because we have capabilities or knowledge. In fact, if you think about yourself, you'll be horrified, not just afraid. Rather, God asks us not to fear because he is with us. When we pray more, when we forget about ourselves and focus on God, we feel God's companionship. When you pray, you know how God is great and powerful. You begin to like prayer more, and you become more certain that his companionship is what gives you strength. Then you will say what Peter said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Matthew 17, 4. He thought about nothing, not eating or drinking or home or service or family, but rather God and his glory. He forgot about himself. This is true prayer. You forget everything and are in his presence all the time. When the angel of the Lord, who was the Christ, said to Gideon, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor, in Judges 6.12, Gideon was surprised because his people were going through a tough time, and he said, If the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? This is Judges 6.13. The first thing God says is, God is with you. And then he told him, Go in this might of yours. Judges 6.14. Do you know what the might is here that God is speaking of? Gideon hasn't changed. He's still just some farmer. The difference now is the Son of God is with him. It means go and fight with this strength, having God with you. We do this a lot and forget that God is with us even in tough situations. Gideon went and saved his people solely with the power of God's companionship. Jesus' last promise to us before his ascension was, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Matthew 28.20 it is the first promise in the Bible, Emmanuel, which is translated God with us, and the last promise, I am with you always. We should always remember there is nothing more precious than this, this I am with you.